business owners and business leaders here in Central Arkansas. And we do that through one-on-one -on -one consulting, um, through events like this today, and then also technical workshops. Um, and then, of course, through the Arnold Innovation that is powered by Comey Corporation, which is a low-cost um, membership um, co-working space. If you're a small business owner and you're interested, let one of us know. Um, and I won't hold us up anymore. Please give John a warm welcome. John, thank you so much for being with us today. Hi. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm Jason Hall. I'm the um Thank you to the conductor for letting me come, and thank you guys for, for uh, showing up and uh, listening to a little story about uh, the coffee shop that could, I guess. So, um, to start off with, who had coffee this morning? Yeah, who had coffee? Everybody, pretty much, a few hands right up, okay. Who had think coffee this morning? Ah, okay, all right, all right, good, good. No shade for the ones that, um, that didn't get the big coffee. So, okay, you have an opportunity for the rest of the day and, and even tomorrow. So, um, but uh, but wanted to, to take a, a little time today and just kind of share our story. Um, I love talking about our story anytime I can. Um, and Erica reached out and uh, very blessed to be able to share who we are and what we do and um, a little bit of the heart and the mission behind it. Well, so we'll get started. Um, right out of the gate, um, Erica sabotaged me on the uh, on the on the slides here. It didn't the format didn't happen? That's supposed to be an E behind the E there. That's a little confusing. Not a normal thud. Uh, you know, that's what it gives us. So, um, family man. So you'll see my family here. This is my wife, Joe, of uh, twenty years. So. Um, that is a testament to her endurance, not anything that I have done. She has tolerated my existence for 20 years, which is more than she probably should. But uh, my oldest son, Jacob, uh, Judah, and John. I've got uh, Jacob is 15, Judah is 11, and John is uh, seven going on 21. So uh, love my family. Uh, we have. Um, Lots of fun together. Uh, we're actually very excited going to Branson this weekend. So got a little time off. So we're gonna go make a make a, a steal away for the uh, for the weekend. Business man to give you a little head, uh, background of who I am as far as that goes. Uh, I graduated from Henderson State University, uh, which uh, with a uh, business of administration. Degree. I guess I'm still already. I'm not sure if I'm a ready or a, or a wolf these days. They haven't sent me a new diploma, so I guess I, I probably have to pay extra for a new one. But uh, they they uh, yeah they recently did a full reorganization. But uh, graduated from business administration, walked into uh, my advisor's office and said, "What is the fastest way out of this place?" And he said, "You look like a business admin major." And I said, "Yes, I do." <laughs> so got out of uh, got out of there with a piece of paper uh, to to impress some folks. Started while I was there at Walmart. My my kind of business time began with Walmart, and my business time began with Walmart in an oil pit in the tire and lube section of the store. So I was underneath cars draining oil and getting covered in grease and all of the fun things and. Something about my boss, uh, I think my boss decided I could either either have the capacity to uh, to do something or to make his life easier, probably the latter, and decided to put me in a leadership role around his department. So began that journey with Walmart. I continued with them for about seven years, finished up as an assistant manager role, then moved to Terminix, uh, which you guys probably are understand, know that. Moved into a sales role with Terminix, did that for about uh, a couple of years in the sales role and worked my way through that organization, finished up as the branch, man as a branch manager for them, then went into an equipment company. Uh, we sold forklifts and all of those, uh, all of the pieces of construction equipment that you'll see erecting buildings and all of the construction sites around 
and went in there, found it was a data analytics job, and quickly started a coffee shop because that is not who I am. So, so found uh, found my way out of that pretty quickly, and uh, and, and the coffee shop. World. So, grew up in a little, to back up a little bit, grew up in southwest Arkansas in a little put up town down there called Locksburg, uh, population 505, the last time that they updated the sign, uh, one of those towns that's got more coon dogs than teeth, so there's, uh, there's that. So, uh, last, oh, yeah. Baseball coach, love coaching my baseball team. I've got an APU baseball team that I'm just gaga over. Uh, we uh, got beat out the last part of this uh, tournament, this last tournament, so I'm, I'm a little bitter about it, but um, there's always the next one, right? So very excited to, uh, to, to coach young young athletes, um, boys that, uh, that really, I don't know, have a passion to, to get together and do something. So really, really love coaching my baseball team. The story of fame. So to get us going here, the inspiration behind the business, I'm going to stay on track, I'm going to stay on track here. The inspiration behind the business is through our traveling around, my wife and I is traveling around, we live in the Pacific Northwest for about five years. Uh, moved, actually had the opportunity to move up there with Terminex um, and continue my career with them. And as we were up there, the coffee scene is absolutely ridiculous. If you guys think we have a lot of coffee shops in Conway, just go to the Pacific Northwest and experience what is happening in that area because there is a coffee shop on every street corner out there. Uh, and quite really, really good coffee too. So. Uh, you don't you don't make it in that town with, uh, with in, in, an inferior product. So we were there, and uh, really kind of got deeper into the coffee culture. My my appreciation for good coffee grew there, and what we found whenever we came back is a not necessarily a complete lack of coffee culture, but definitely lacking in the drive through aspect. And my wife would go into some of the great coffee shops that we have in town and drag the three ring circus in behind her. And every time that she would do that, if there was a Bible study or a study session or a business meeting, we would just roll a grenade right in the middle of that with my children coming in, uh, hanging from the ceiling, doing cartwheels and things. So she said, we don't have any drive through coffee that I really enjoy. And I would really like to do something with it. So the uh, that's the uh, the inspiration, the start. So if you guys are familiar with our locations here in town, you know we started at the little room closet that's uh, in the middle of the parking lot in front of Eat My Catfish out there on Hard Rider Street. 86 square feet inside of that. And we use every square inch of it. So we started there, we had an opportunity. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the business that was there before, but it was Ketchum's Cappuccino. And uh, Mr. Ketchum was quite uh, an interesting fella. I had the opportunity to sit down with him and just kind of learn about his life and who he was and how long he served coffee in the area. Uh, he, he's, he's, he had been around for quite a while. So he was getting ready to move on with his life and we were able to take over the lease of the building, uh, kind of revamp it and get going in that location. So the, um, the chaos, we had no idea what we were stepping into, to be honest with you. We stepped in there, we opened it up and instantly lines, crazy lines and crazy popularity. And it was me and two other people in that little box trying to figure out how to make coffee as fast as we possibly could. Uh, completely understaffed, completely outmanned, uh, and uh, yeah, just just trying, just going in every day, clinging on for your life, basically, was the, was the way of that. We were able to grow. I hired more staff through that business. And about a year and a half after that, 
had the opportunity to take over a location that you guys know might be on day board. And we started that at, uh, we, we were able to open the end of January in 2020. And in March of 2020 happened. Who knows what happened in March of 2020? Everybody knows what happened in March of 2020. So we quickly went into freak out mode and we're like, man, what is this going to do to our business? How are we going to survive? Uh, thankfully, we had some, some good, strong relationships with other business owners around, other coffee companies <laughs> as well. And we all kind of you know, collaborated and kind of huddled it together and, and figured out what we were going to do. For us, it was right time, right place. We had the exact perfect business model to exist through COVID. We had drive through And as you probably guys probably know, drive throughs thrived during COVID. So we were able to really capitalize on that. And again, it was absolute pandemonium. At the time, I was working two jobs. I was, was working my job, my, my full-time job, uh, and then switching over to try to keep the lights on at faint and quickly realized I don't need to have another job. I need to focus on, on faint with the amount of, the amount of growth that we had. We're able to do that. Shortly thereafter, we started plans on our Greenbrier store. So we uh, opened our store in Greenbrier. Then uh, very shortly after that, we opened our store in Bologna. Then we had an opportunity to uh, be on the College of Business, be in the College of Business at UCA and moved into the College of Business. And uh, last, our last venture that we have is at, uh, oh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Cabot. Uh, we have a, a trailer out there that uh, we operate out of there. So right now we have six active locations. Very, very blessed to be able to do that. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more here in a bit about The purpose, my wife and I knew that whenever we started our business, that whatever we wanted to do, however we went to business or into business, whether that was selling used car parts, coffee, or whatever it was that we wanted to be philanthropic in nature, to be able to give back to the customers and to the community that supported us. That's been a driving factor for our business since the very, very, very beginning. And one of the, the major reasons there, if you guys saw my son, my son, my oldest son, Jacob, who, uh, who was on, on that picture, 15, he has cerebral palsy and is on the spectrum. And one of the big reasons why we want to give back and be generous in nature is because we've had a lot of organizations that have come alongside of us and been very generous, offered services and really helped us through some difficult times, difficult things in getting him plugged into a peer group or providing different types of services. And we wanna make sure that if at all possible, we can make those services or help those services continue to exist for other families that might need that or come, come behind us. So that is, the big purpose around why, why we do what we do. The legacy, lastly, for that is, I, we hope that other businesses, other folks around the area, whether that's businesses or customers can come, they see us, they see the generosity and they in turn take that and run with it. They also are generous and uh, help helping that aspect. So we want to build a legacy that lives on beyond us, that, that we inspire others to be generous as well. Mission, vision, and values. We'll talk about this a little bit. You go to any business 101 class, any kind of business marketing class, all of that, they, they, 
you're going to have to come up with your mission vision values, right? And so I uh, thought it would be neat to share those with you guys and a little bit about who we are. So our mission, think will foster community in order to encourage others who drink our product to value charity. We will serve quickly and friendly to grow our fans. We will be generous to organizations inside our community that support individuals with different abilities. And one of the things that I love to do, or I like to do, because I want my employees and the people that are involved in our organization to be able to remember this, right? Is kind of break it down to three key words, right? So our three key words out of that are our community serve and generous. So to kind of break down our, our mission statement, coffee creates community, right? You go to a coffee shop and you see people gathered around, you see people talking, sharing life, doing different things together in coffee shops, right? So it creates a community. But what we want to do is take that community and drive that community, have that community with a purpose, right? And that purpose is to value charity, to push charity and to be generous. We'll serve quickly, so serve quickly to grow our fans. Um, service is, a, is a obviously a key component for any business, particularly food service. One of the things that you'll see in that is we want to grow our fans. Who knows who Howard Schultz is? Anybody ever heard of Howard Schultz? The CEO for Starbucks for many, many years, took Starbucks and grew them to who they were or who they are. Um, his ethos was we want to be, we want to make fans of our products, not we don't want to go to go to market. We don't have a huge marketing budget. Think about 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Did you, did you remember seeing a lot of Starbucks ads? Did, of course, you didn't probably they didn't market on TV that much. Uh, I think I see a, I see a lot of social stuff pop up with them these days, but they didn't have a huge marketing component, huge marketing budget. Their idea, Howard Schultz's idea was, let me grow my fans so that they will go and talk about my product, talk about who we are, and then organically we grow through that. Did a great job in doing that. So that's our ethos around that as well. We want to grow our fans. Um, and then be generous inside our community that, uh, that supports it. We will be generous to Organizations inside our community that supports individuals with differing abilities. So being generous, we want to exemplify that. So far, this in uh, in our five years of existence, which it's hard to believe that we've been doing this for five years and five years of our existence, we've been able to give back over $85,000 to different organizations. That is a testament to to the support and love of our of our community and the people who come behind us and, and have helped us be successful. Make mostly our customers. Um, our customers have gotten 100% behind who we are and, and our values and have helped us push that huge. So that is a number I'm very proud of. I don't say it in a braggadocious way, but I am very proud of that number. So uh, the vision. Uh, vision is where we're going, right? What we want to do. Think we'll operate 10 locations by 2025 and leave to inspire others to be charitable in their communities. So we want to spread out, right? We want to go to different areas. We want to be influential in different areas and show them the way, right? You know, show them that, that how to be generous. Give them the opportunities to partner with us for organizations in those areas, right? So everywhere we go, we try to find local organizations there around that we work with. A lot of like the last, the last month we worked with uh, Special Olympics and we worked with Special Olympics teams in each of our areas where e each of our shops sponsored a different Special Olympics team. And so we really want to be able to lead the charge in those communities. We want to grow our, our, our business so that we can be more generous, right? Uh, in in, uh, in two more years, I want to double that number of, of get back right there. 
1025 charity. That's our uh, that's our three for that. So our values, charity, service, and quality. Obviously, I've talked about that. I've kind of beat that drum quite a bit already with charity. Uh, we want to be char uh, charitable, generous. We want to have high quality service. But uh, lastly, we want to have a quality product. We want to be set apart from other companies that do what we do, right? There's a lot of drive through companies. We were the one of the first ones to, to get into town. Now there's a lot, right? We want to be different. We want to have a different flavor. We want our quality to be set apart than, than others. And I think you'll find that if you go to ours versus a lot of others, the taste difference is definitely there. Um, a lot of, we, we, we tend to go more coffee forward with our product than, um, you know, a lot of extra flavor and all of that stuff. We, we have, I will write about this. We have really good coffee. And so uh, we really want to hop like that. So. <laughs> One of the things that, oh, this is my, this is my baseball thing, by the way. <laughs> they're fun. Sometimes. Until they're not, then you want to check them. But you can't do that with eight year olds. So um, the other parents got to get mad at you. I can do it with mine, but I can other parents don't, don't enjoy it as much. So um, we can't do it on our own. Um, one of the things that I, wanted to kind of share with you guys is how did we grow? How did, how did we, how do we do what we do? How was I able to, to accomplish this? Um, the, the secret is I was not able to accomplish this. Um, I have a fantastic group of people that work with me. I have fantastic managers. I have, uh, we, we talked about this, about marketing. I have a fantastic person that helps me uh, with Mark, I'm old. I like to see this. Pepper, see the salt and the pepper here. I don't know my target demographic. I have people that do. Them. So I, I have people that really can hone in and speak to speak to those people. So I have um, great managers, a great team around um, around me that that prop me up and, and make me a lot better than I am, to be honest. And that's really a thing. <coughs> So one of the things that I hear business owners say all the time, I, I will I will walk up to a business owner and it's a it's a one man, a one woman operation, and bless them, their hair is just frazzled out. They're working seven days a week, they're working 12 hours a day and trying to fit in any kind of life and, and, and family time around that. And I hear them say, I just can't get everything done that I need to do. And it's hard. I, I know. I know it's hard because I, I was there. I was absolutely there. Whenever I was making coffee in a, in, a, in a little box over there with one other person, and we were just looking at each other with this panic look about how are we going to get this done, I know exactly where we are. Uh, because I would work <laughs> 10, 12 hours a day. Then I would go home and I would do payroll, or I would go home and reconcile books, or I would go home and reply to messages that have been hitting my inbox all day long because emails don't stop, do they? They never stop. No matter whether you are working on your project or wherever, the, 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 the work will pile up. So, what I found. And it's very difficult to do is I need to be working on my business a lot more and not working in my business. And that's really easy to say, right? Really easy to do, really, or, or really hard to do, very easy to say. Um, but if you're not intentional about that, then what you'll find is um, you're, you're just, just going to mowed over. You're going to get mulled over by the amount of stuff that just piles up on us. Um, one, one mistake that, oh, it's like, it's like one of my favorite quotes here. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. We are not meant to do it by ourselves, right? Life in general, definitely not meant to do it by ourselves. Business, not meant to do it by ourselves. 
uh, we have to have a team like this. Uh, there's no way I could, again, going back to my team, there's no way I could do what we do if I didn't have the people around me that I do. Could I get, do, do they do it exactly like I want it every time? No, they don't. But we can get it, we can get a lot more accomplished if we all pull together and, and do it as a team. You know, I, um, I hear a lot of this. My time's free. You know, so it's not. It's not. If you ever, I heard, I heard someone say this the other day. I don't have to account for that. I don't pay myself, you know, on the books. I don't have to, to, to my, my, my salary doesn't hit the payroll. Like, well, your time is not free. It's costing, it's costing you or it's costing somebody around you something. Um, it's costing your family something. So I would say, how valuable is your time? Do, do, you, do you value your time at 50 bucks an hour? Do you value your time at 120 bucks? How much do you bill your clients? Because is how much is that time worth versus what you value? Oftentimes you'll find that your your time is is a lot more expensive than you than you think it is. So how do we how do we get past this? We delegate, right? We bring in people. We bring in people around us. Uh, one of the things who, who knows John Maxwell. For those of you who haven't raised your hand, look this guy up. He is somebody that I have modeled a lot of our leadership around inside of our company. A uh, great guy. Been in a been in, in leadership coaching for a long, long time. Probably the most influential leadership book that I've ever read is the Five Laws of Leadership or Five Levels of Leadership. Sorry, um, and um, I tend to model a lot of my leadership style after John Maxwell. Uh, not perfectly by any means, but I take a lot of inspiration from him. His thing is delegation and development, right? He, he has a whole blurb on delegation and development and bringing the people around you that can help you free up your time to do what you need to do to work on your business, right? So if, if we're delegating, delegating takes a lot of time, right? It takes me a lot of time whenever I'm trying to train somebody to do something because delegation is really training. And the thing, one of the things that I love about Maxwell, what he says in regards to that is his process for how you train. So it's a five-step process. I do it. I do it and you watch. We do it together. You do it and I watch. And then finally, you do it, right? So, so let's break that down. So I do it, right? I know how to move widget, this, this widget from here to here, right? Okay, I understand that process, picking it up, moving it from that table to that table. What next? I, I've got to get somebody here with me that can do it. That that means we're gonna to have to bring somebody alongside us, right? That can that can watch that. One of the things that hurts me that gets under my skin, you can tell you can, you can ask my manager about this, is whenever they're doing something and they don't have somebody beside them doing it with them, or at least watch it, because you're not developing. Anybody, you're not training anybody by, by, by not having something around you. So I'm moving that widget, and somebody's watching me how I move that widget, right? They're at least getting an understanding of how, how that widget is moving, right? And then, hey, we both grab that widget together and we move it over to that table. Show them, showing them the process, right? And then just standing back and watching them do it. And then lastly, doing it. One of the things that I always have heard is if you don't know how to teach a job or how to teach something, you don't know it, right? So one of the steps, one step even further is I want that person that I've just trained to take that that I've, that I've taught them and go teach somebody else. So how valuable is your time? Take, take the time to develop and to train other people because otherwise, you're, you're stuck right where you are. And 
there's no way. Everybody wants to grow their business. Everybody wants to scale. One of the things that has allowed us to do that, this very thing right here, is bringing me, me being able to bring people alongside. And it's hard. I, I know it's hard. And, and I've, I've done it giving people coffee before, right? Maybe you have a value. Maybe you have a service that's value added. That, that maybe you don't have to fill out cash right out, right out of the way. You know, or out of the gate. You know. um, but maybe there's something that, that, uh, that you can trade to bring people alongside that will help you accomplish your goals. Do it because otherwise you're you're stuck right where you are. Take the time to dream. One of my baseball. That is not one of my baseball kids. That's John losing his mind from a dugout. If I see that happening on my baseball field, anyway. Um, <laughs> take the time to dream. You can't hit a target that you don't have, or that you don't see. If you don't take the time to step back and examine your business, examine where you want to be, de develop those mission, the, the vision and values for your business, then it's going to be hard to move that ball forward. It's going to be hard to push your business forward if you don't have those and if you don't take time to drink one of the things that i run into with, with a lot of business owners is whenever they first start they're bright they're full of energy they're create the creativity is just overflowing right there at the beginning because they're dreaming about their business they're dreaming about what happens and then you talk to that person six months or nine months later when they have just been beat down to the ground because they're in that daily grind, right? And they just lost it. They've lost all of that creativity. They've lost all of that. And it's because you get into the grind and you forget who you are. You forget why you did it. You forget why you're why you're going through. Because it doesn't matter. Any there's there's romance at the beginning of starting a business. There's some entrepreneurs in here, I know, because I've talked to you guys, but there's romance at the beginning when you when you start a business, but it turns into a job eventually, right? It turns into the to, to a nine to five grind eventually, right? So you've got to be intentional about stepping back and being able to dream about where you want to be, what you want to accomplish, and reinvigorate that that creative energy. Create those targets because if you're not intentional about that. What you'll find is you're going to be wrapped up and be busy. You're not going to be getting, you're not going to be moving the ball forward, right? Hey, sales might look good because you're in there pushing it and doing all that stuff, but you don't, you're not, not really accomplishing your dream. You're not really pushing your dream forward. So, that's my information. Feel free to write it down, jot it down, call me, bug me. Happy to answer any questions or to, to help in any way I can. Um, really appreciate you guys coming here and listening to our story, to my story, uh, to uh, Think's story, and about who we are. And I uh, really appreciate um, the conductor and allowing me to come and share that story. So thanks so much. All right. Oh, first of all, thank you for that. I'm I'm so just inspired by you and I love hearing the story behind you. I think coffee, especially I didn't realize you were in Seattle. I did my undergraduate in Seattle, so family there. And far before I became a bee snob, I was a co I am a coffee yeah. snob. You can see I have big coffee. And I'm very particular about my coffee. Well done. One thing I will say that is so inspiring, I've been drinking big <laughs> coffee this whole time and loving it and telling my friends and friends talk about it. We talk about it all the time. None of us, I did not know about the values and, and the mission of charity that's so strong behind your organization, not only impressed, I'm floored, and 
I don't know if you can write something on a cup that both of them. I'm really serious. Like, like I love this copy so much. I will go again this week at least. But if I read this amount came to this charity or this is our value, I mean, I just think it would just launch you guys so far. And you'd be like, I'm going here tomorrow. You know, like, I don't know. I just, I'm yeah. really impressed. And uh, thank you again for sharing this. Absolutely. Story. I, that's that's one thing that um, I, I, too, too many friends are telling me I'm, I'm 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 too modest in regards to that. I try not to, again try not to be braggadocious about like our accomplishments because I'm just like I say I'm normal billion, right? So um, but yeah, so but I, that's that's a good idea. It's a good thought. Like even through the drive through and your your employees are wonderful. I tell you how you do that. They're all great. Every time they're different. Um, but just you know, the way you can see the values and, and the way the employees treat the customers. Um, but I don't think that would be bragging at all. I think it's phenomenal. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. That works. Okay, so we talked about marketing earlier. Can you expand a little more for maybe people who get the same thing every time that they go or they don't look at the menu every season? But about the things that you guys do from a marketing aspect to sure. change up your menu. The themes of those um, and just like what that looks like and like do it. Yes. So I have some 20 year olds that collaborate and help me create a lot of the things that I do. Um, again, like I said, I do, I, I, I know who we're trying to target, right? I just don't know necessarily how <laughs> to target them, right? And so I've got a great team of folks that help concoct our menu, name our menu. Every season, you guys, you guys are familiar with our business. Every season we have a, a, a different kind of rotating menu that just we have a thematic thing that we do. And that takes a lot of energy and a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of fun, but it does take a lot of energy, a lot of work. And I've got uh, one, one gal in particular uh, who absolutely kills it on that and kind of leads the charge for my managers and it's a collaborative process um, with with them. I'll I'll throw it out at, at an idea and then they'll say shut up and go back to the corner. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're 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 really really good. I would I would highly recommend um, invest in marketing. It's 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 the way. It is a it's a huge huge benefit for you. Can you tell the story behind your name? Ah, that's a good thing. I actually glossed over. I thought about that after I uh, ended up everything. So, think is an acronym. It stands for therapy in a cup. Okay, T H. The all the periods. The, the the periods are there so that my eye won't twitch because <laughs> otherwise it's not symmetrical with the acronym. But anyway, so people get the idea that it's an acronym uh, whenever they see that. So think stands therapy in a cup. Obviously, cup spelled with a K. Um, and it's a play on coffee bean therapeutic, right? So it's you're a, a little less murdery whenever you uh, drink your coffee. And so uh, also we give back to organizations that support individuals with different abilities and their families. And a lot of those organizations provide their type services. So by being by the room, they're Any other questions? When you were in the grind trying to do it all yourself, is there any one thing that just, uh -huh, I mean, mm -hmm. to bring on more people, delegate? Yeah. So I I spent, oh my gosh, 15 plus years in the corporate world. And um, that really is, is what I think probably prepared. Honestly, I, I don't. I could never go back to the corporate world. I don't think I could ever go back to the corporate world. I'd be a terrible employee, by the way. Um, but I, I, I don't know if I could go back and work for, for, for another corporation. But what it did is it gave me a lot of tools and understanding of how businesses that aren't successful are organized. And, and I knew that whenever I got was down into the grind, and I did, I stopped and I did a bit of a self-examination of, okay, I can't get to where I want to be if I don't change some things. And it was expensive and it was scary. And because especially if you're a, you're kind of a, a, a one man show or a one woman show, handing the reins over to somebody or giving 
somebody responsibility in an area that you may feel is sacred, uh, that's terrifying and it's expensive. And terrifying and expensive, you tend to don't do those things, right? <laughs> so, so that was something that that I just knew that I was going to have to take a risk uh, if I if I wanted to get to where I was going. Honestly, we bootstrapped the first location. Hey, it's unbelievable how cheap we got into that location. Um, and so whenever money's tight, because we we literally did it with, with the savings account that we had and with a very small SBA loan. And um, yeah, it was, it was difficult. But I mean, eventually you just have to buy the bullet and, uh, and poke it out there and see what happens. Any other questions? Thank you so awesome. much.